Hi everyone. Welcome to the 7th lesson of the Crow Panel ESP32 Terminal Display Series Tutorials. In this session, I will demonstrate how to create a lamp control interface using Squareline Studio and display it on the screen. The lesson will be divided into three parts. First, designing the UI second, modifying the example code, and third, modifying the UI code. Since I've already covered in detail in previous lessons how to integrate the UI into the example code provided and how to customize the code based on your board, I won't go over those steps in this lesson. If you have any questions, please refer to the content in the sixth lesson. The software versions used in this lesson are as follows. Now, let's move on to the first step and design our UI. Open the code folder for the seventh lesson. Currently, the folder only contains example code and lacks a UI file, so we'll need to design the control interface for the desk lamp ourselves. Launch Squareline Studio and create a new UI project. If you're uncertain about how to create a project, please refer to the content of the previous lesson. Here, set the project name and path and enter the correct resolution based on the size of the board you're using. If you forget, you can find a table on the Crow Panel ESP32 series page that lists the approximate hardware information for each size. Remember to select a color depth of 16-bit for all board sizes. Then, choose the LVGL version 8.3.11 and click Create. When using Squareline Studio, some users may wonder how to display a specific image. In this lesson, I'll show you how to do it. In the lower right corner of the Assets panel, click Add File into Assets and select the image you want to use in your project. It will then appear in the Assets panel. Next, add an image widget to the screen and in the Inspector panel on the right, select the image you just added to Assets. Now, you should be able to see the desired image on the screen. Since we're designing a control panel for a table lamp, it requires adding two buttons to control the lights on off status. Let's adjust the size and position of the buttons first. The blue button is a bit too jarring, so I'll change it to the same color as the lamp. I'll use the color picker tool to extract the color from the lamp. Then, we'll add a label to each button to indicate their functions. Let's increase the font size to 40 and change the label color to white. It'll look nicer. Next, switch to the Hierarchy panel and set Label 1 as a child component of Button 1. You can simply drag it over. Now, whenever I move Button 1, Label 1 will move along with it. The button for turning on the light is already set up. To create the button for turning off the light, click on the button behind Button 1 in the Hierarchy panel, select Copy, then right-click in the same panel and choose Paste as Child. Move it to an appropriate position and rename its label to off. This way, the button for turning off the light is also ready. Finally, click on simulate to see how it works. Currently, the buttons don't have any events attached, but we need them to change the state of the desk lamp when pressed. Therefore, we need to add events to these two buttons. Select button 1, click add event, and choose the trigger condition for the button. I prefer using Release, but you can change it based on your preference. When selecting the action for the event, you'll notice that there's no option to directly change the circuit state. In this case, we can choose Call Function and fill in the desired function name. OK, the event for button 1 is now set. For button 2, use the same condition and action, but call the lamp off function. Once everything is set up, Click Simulate again to check for any error messages or crashes. It seems to be running smoothly. Now you can export the UI file. Click on File and open Project Settings. The exporting process was explained in detail in the previous lesson, so I won't go over it again in this lesson. After setting up the project directory and export directory, type in ElvGel header file here. Then, check the flat export option. Finally, Click Apply Changes. After setting up the export rules, click Export and select Export UI File. Alright, the UI file has been successfully exported. You can find the exported UI file based on the export path you just set. Copy these UI files into the example code folder. 
and upon opening the example code, you'll notice that the UI files open as well. Moving on to the next step, you'll modify the example code. The example code for this lesson is identical to the one in the sixth lesson, meaning that the function to execute the UI program has already been included. Consequently, you only need to ensure that the new function pin is initialized. Open the schematic of the development board. You can see that the GPO40 pin controls the light bulb and initialize this pin in the code. Thus, the example code modifications are complete. It's worth noting that two boards are used GPIO40 pin. All right, let's move on to the third step, modifying the UI file. When designing the UI, we added an event for button one and button two. You can navigate to the UI.C file to locate these events. When triggered, these events call the lamp on and lamp off functions. You'll find these functions in the UI event.c file. Currently, these functions are empty and intended for you to customize. If you want the desk lamp to turn on when button one is pressed, you'll need to connect an LAD module to the GPIOD port on your board to represent the lamp. Here's a schematic representation of how the LAD module works. When GPIOD is high, the LAD turns on. When GPIOD is low, the LAD turns off. In your program, you would express this functionality as follows. Please note that GPIO40 is used here because the GPIOD pin on the ESPRGB screen corresponds to pin 40. If you're using a board of AESP32 SPI screen, the pin number is equal. Additionally, since we're using the digital write function, we need to include the Arduino header file in this file. Otherwise, the compiler will throw an error as it cannot find the digital write function. With that, the modifications to the UI file are complete. Let's compile and upload the code to see the results. Click on Tools to configure the compilation settings and connect your board to the computer using a USB-C cable. If you're unsure how to configure the settings for different boards, please review the content from the first lesson. As the compilation process can be lengthy, incorrect settings could waste a considerable amount of your time. After configuring the compilation settings, click Upload. Since the upload process may take a while, I'll speed up this part of the video. Once the upload is complete, if the board doesn't reset automatically, you can manually press the reset button on the back of the board. You'll then see the UI interface you designed displayed on the screen and the button events will function normally. That's it for this lesson. If you find this series of tutorials helpful, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. See you next time.